OpenAI GPT models are cut off from the current information after the end of their training time. What if we could change that? What if we could feed the model with the latest information and ask it to summarize it or even rewrite it into a new style or consider having it translated into a completely different language? There are many interesting opportunities what you could do with that. Let's see how we can execute that. Hi, this is Greg from Business Automated and today I will show you how you can feed any website into OpenAI GPT API and how you can ask the GPT model to translate it into any format. So what we will start here with is actually my own article on Medium which talks about moving email content into Google Sheets. And the first step in this Airtable database, you can see that I have asked, uh, I have selected prompt summarize. And here you can actually see what is the prompt coming from, from the other table over here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the button. The button is going to open the window, close the window. And in the background, we will be running a GPT model. You can see that we are done. The first output over here contains the raw result of the website. So this is actually what you can see on my website. You can see all that content over here grabbed directly as a raw text inside of Airtable. Now the second part is according to our prompt, it's a summary of this whole article into five points. Yep, it's making pretty good sense. All right, now let's try to do something different with this article. So now I will select a different prompt. I called it rewrite creatively. And here you will see that this prompt has a different instruction saying rewrite it as if you were talking to a child using metaphors to illustrate in a way that the child would understand. So let's test this one as well. And we have started the OpenAI model. And by the way, all those prompts are sitting right over here when we have prompt and the description what's short name of the prompt and the description of the actual prompt that we are using. So let's go back over here and you can see that now we're having drastically different result. And the result is pretty impressive because it started talking to a kid about a magical tool that can neatly pick up all the toys and put them in an organized way into a box. Pretty cool. Well, this is a pretty good description of what the scenario does about organizing your Gmail emails into Google Sheets. So this is indeed a pretty creative description. Now let's try something different. Let's rewrite this into German. So let's do the same thing. Here we're saying clearly rewrite this website in German. And let's see what is the reply. The reply is German, but unfortunately tells us that it cannot uh, translate it, but uh, it does. So it actually um, translates everything in German. Maybe the reason, maybe the reason for for that is that uh, the prompt is pretty lousy over here. I'm telling it to rewrite it, the web the website in German. Maybe I should say to have it translated so this is something that you could experiment with now let's look at something different so now i'm having a different article i will ask it to let's say translate into spanish i'll create a new prompt and we see result over here as well so we did get a translation okay so now what about if we do not have a website what if we would like to search the internet so in this scenario and i'll actually show you in a second this whole scenario that is operating this um, this automation what if we would like to ex what if we would like to execute a search of the internet so in this case what we will ask we will ask to summarize but give us the links to relevant website make sure to include relevant links let's do this again and now you will see that this part is the raw content of what we have gotten from google search result and here we have a summary that actually contains five most popular pages together with the link if you would like to go and visit the link that's fantastic now let's see what we could do for example if we feed the website from yahoo let's see what's on yahoo.com today 
and we're getting some political news and some think some things about photos music and so on so just your regular general news okay so let's ask it to summarize the top five news from yahoo let's see what is the summary that we get and here on one side you will see that we have the raw text that came from the website so all that points and there is quite a lot of text over here what if we have it summarized yeah so you can see over here we got uh, 12 13 points that basically summarize what the whole page is all about so all right so now how is this all happening so let's start from the button over here the thing that the button does you can see that we are pretty much triggering a webhook so this is the URL of the webhook and after the question mark we have the query parameters and our query parameters is a record ID and dynamically generated record ID this way it's different for every row and where is this webhook coming from so the webhook is coming from make um, integromat and I'm sure you are familiar with this tool if you are following my channel if not there is a there is a link in the description and this is the scenario that allows us to feed them the internet content into OpenAI. And I will start over here from the very beginning and I'll walk you through the details of the scenario. You can also download the blueprint for the scenario from, um, from the links below if you would like to just shortcut it instead of doing it yourself. So uh, do, uh, do test this one out. And yeah, so let's start over here. Uh, so in the beginning, we are creating the first step, which is a webhook. So this is exactly the URL that we are using under the button, right? And the next module over here is a webhook response. Why? Because I don't like this window that opens up once you start the button. You have the window, you have a window that opens because you are technically clicking on a URL. So this is a nice little code that all it does opens the window, starts a script and closes down the window. So just to clean it up a little bit. So that's a nice trick to get rid of that. And then the next step that we have on the list is getting the details of that specific record from Airtable. So based on the record ID that we get, we look into Airtable into the base that we're using into the table that where we have the questions and we get more information about that record so you can see over here all right and the next step over here we are actually making a request so what this formula over here means is that if we have http inside of the url or query field means we have a direct link if that is true then we would just go ahead and make a request directly to the URL. However, if this does not have HTTP, so likely we are making a question. So in this case, we have added a Google URL with this search question mark Q equals, which generates your regular Google search. So this way we would make a request to regular Google website to get back the information from Google. And the next step, the response that we're getting from Google or from uh, any other source will be unfortunately something like this. So it's a super long HTML file, which is not readable uh, by a human being. Luckily, there is a HTML to text parser inside of Make. So the output that we are getting is a pure text. So we are not getting anything of the HTML elements, but we're still getting some things like this, which are markdown elements. And what we are doing in the next step, this is a little bit of funky uh, regex expression, which all it does, it removes everything that is not a URL markdown. So for example, something like this, this will be removed or link to images will be removed, but everything that contains actual URL in Google search will uh, will remain and will be returned as the next next step over here.
okay and for technical reason because we are going to be feeding this into uh, OpenAI we're just doing some text transformation to escape all the characters that would break the JSON so this is one step and then in the next step we are actually setting up the variables that we will pass into OpenAI and as you will see we are not using standard OpenAI uh, request we are using a custom module here for the OpenAI which allows us to pass functions so in the module over here I am configuring this sort of standard variable that you would see in the chat context so the system variable and here I'm explaining to the OpenAI that you are a skillful web researcher and so on then here I'm feeding the first prompt and this is the new part this is where I'm feeding the function and this is a new thing as you will see with the new model we are able to feed it a custom function so you will see that this is a specific description of a function and as you will see, see it over here I will not be going too much into details but this is sort of the simplest function that has the name has a description for OpenAI to know what it does and then it has description what sort of parameters it accepts so in this case the property of the parameters is a Q which is a simple string and then search query to be passed to the engine okay and now I have made a little bit of a shortcut so bear with me what I will do I will enable this route and I would run this once and I will start a query so you can see that we have started and we are executing the OpenAI module twice and I will show you why and where is my shortcut okay the first module over here contains following input so it contains system message it contains the user message where it contains the prompt and the URL that we have provided and we also provide it with the function so this is the new feature that is actually available only in the model models 0613 so either GPT-4 or 3.5 turbo but only in that 0613 version and this allows GPT to ask a question to the function so when you look at the response then the actual response over here you see that the choices this is where the response is the finished reason is function call and the message from the assistant is empty content but it passes back a function call so this is actually when GPT API would ask a function to make a call but it returns as this so we need to handle this function call so a proper way of executing this would be right now next model if we see a function call then we would make a call that was here request all the information and get all the content and once we get all that information we would feed back that information again into OpenAI into the request but as you will see I just made a shortcut since the function here is super simple and I just realized it why do this so long let me just shortcut this because I always know what will be the request since I'm always asking it the same question to check the internet so it, so it will always check for the function so I just made a shortcut and I'll show you this in a second I'll just disable this I'm showing this just for you to understand how the model works and just to understand what is happening over here now so here what we're doing we are having this system role which explains them explains um, the role of AI and then we have the user content and after that we are seeing exactly this assistant function call same response as we would get here so I, I know what it will be so I'm actually feeling it straight away here so I'm mocking up that it has made this uh, this response and the next step we can see a new thing which is a role function this is how we feed back the information from a function back into OpenAI so we have role system then we have a user prompt then assistant replies hey I need to check a function and then the function replies information that we have actually requested before so you can see that's a bit of a shortcut and that's the end and then we have function just to make it consistent so it knows what function it was and once we make this request 
then actually the model thinks that it has requested information from the function and it got the information from the function back. So this is this whole chat context. So you will see right over here, you get a response that contains the summary message. If you ask me, you probably could also get a similar result without using functions, just brute force feeding it with the content from, from the article, it would work just fine. But I'm just showing you this for the sake of science and kind of understanding how that function calling works. And also in case you would like to, for example, go over here and define, apart from the search function, maybe define another function over here. So this is just for the sake of science and understanding how it works. And then once the information is received, we are updating back the original table and passing the raw text result for us to see what is happening and the output from the GPT-4. Okay, and by the way, I'm using here the old module, the, the new Airtable module, the version three does exactly the same. Uh, the difference is that if you would, for example, get the blueprint, then, then the module version three will not keep all the text links over here. So this is why I kept using the version two, which where the mapping for the input is based on the name. So as long as you change it over to a base that has the same table and the same names, this will, the mapping will stay over here. You just need to use uh, authentication using access, personal access token instead of OAuth, but you can use this just as a, as an example, whichever one is easier. So you can either use this module by adding personal access token, or you can use this module, but then you would have to kind of map those results would disappear. If you're using my blueprint, those results would disappear and you would have to manually map them over here. So yeah, so that's everything. I hope this was useful for you guys. Let me know what do you think about uh, using chat GPT and using GPT this way. And yeah, please like and subscribe and let me know what other business automation topic you have on your mind. Have a good day. Bye.